A worn or vintage texture is not only a really popular design trend in t-shirts right now, but it also helps your DTF graphics feel softer by adding some open space to the design. I'm gonna show you three ways to achieve this look using vector texture files in Illustrator, using a JPEG texture file in Photoshop, and also using special brushes in Photoshop. If you wanna skip ahead to those sections, there are chapter markers in the timeline below. First, let's go to Illustrator. We've got our image opened up here in Illustrator and because it's a vector, we're not really worried about the size because vectors are infinitely scalable. But one of the things we wanna make sure is the texture we're using is the same color as the background knockout. And the other thing we wanna do is make sure we have the background color to test and verify our work afterwards. So before I do anything else, I'm going to create a rectangle here that is that black color, which is the color we're getting rid of or the color of our shirt. I'm gonna drag it here to the bottom. I'm gonna hide it, lock it, and let's get going. Now, you need some kind of texture to lay over this to kind of cut out those holes in it. Now, you can use really any kind of texture file you want, but if you need some really high quality ones, you can find them on our website, colorgamutconsulting.com. Here in our store, you're gonna find this texture pack, and you're gonna get seven different texture files that you can use to create your vintage worn texture. Again, this works with any kind of texture file that you have on hand. I've got a couple different ones here. They're named kind of for what they look like, but let's go with this cracked mud texture. I'm gonna open it up in Illustrator. We're going to select it. Here you can see it's nice, clean vector texture. We're gonna copy it, Command or Control C and we're gonna paste it, Command or Control V. And before we do anything else, we know we wanna knock out this black background, so let's just make sure the blacks are the same color. So I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool or the shortcut I and select this black background just to make sure they're all exactly the same black because sometimes it'll do slightly different color blacks. Let's resize this selection tool. We can grab it, move it around. If you wanna resize it to make it look a little different or you wanna rotate it around, basically just use your artistic eye, decide what you want this vintage texture to kinda of look like on your final graphic. Don't worry about um, aspect ratio or anything like that. You can squish it and smash it all you want to get the look that you're going for. So that looks pretty good. Now let's get rid of this texture. And these next steps are gonna seem very familiar if you've watched our how to do a color knockout video. So first we're gonna select everything and we're gonna to go to object. And if we don't see this expand option here, uh, we're gonna first need to expand the appearance. There's something in that lower graphic that needs some extra expanding. So we're gonna select everything again, object, and now regular expand and check mark, fill, and stroke. Yep, we're good there. Now we need to do Pathfinder. If you don't see your Pathfinder window open here, go to Windows, Pathfinder, and we're gonna use the Merge function, this one here in the middle on the bottom. Now watch the layer panel here. You're gonna see it went to one just kind of solid layer. Now to get rid of this, we're gonna use the A tool or the direct select tool that's located right here. We're gonna select this black. Then we're gonna go select, same, fill color. This is why we made sure it was the same color as the black background. And we're gonna hit delete. There we go, awesome. We've done that knockout. It got rid of some of the black from the image. And we're gonna bring back that background just to make sure our work is perfect. There we are. Absolutely awesome. Turn off your background layer, save this, and now you're ready to print. Now we're in Photoshop, and we're gonna use those same vintage texture packs. However, this time, we're gonna use the JPEGs, not the vector files. Instead of the cracked mud, let's do the cracked paint texture. We're gonna go ahead and open this in Photoshop. The first thing I want you to note is that this texture file has no semi-transparent pixels in it. That's because I built it for DTF, but many texture files will have a lot of semi-transparent pixels in it, but I'll show you how to address that in just a moment. So first let's go Command or Control A to select everything, Command or Control C to copy it. 
Click back over here and on our main image layer, we're gonna add a layer mask. Hold down Option or Alt, click on it, and paste our texture file. Now, right now, it's much bigger than the original file. We are doing it at 300 DPI, so you shouldn't need to resize it and have it look good, but if you want to, you can resize it. Just simply move in here, but be aware that if you resize it, it will create some semi-transparent pixels. You know, just so I can show you exactly how that works, let's move that down a little bit to make it a little smaller and click off of it. And there we have it. We've got our nice worn vintage texture. That actually looks a bit much. So let's back up a couple steps. Hold down Option, Alt, paste it in there. And let's definitely make it smaller so it's not as pronounced. There we go. And I like that better. Now, if we zoom in, you're gonna see that we created some semi-transparent pixels from resizing that texture file. If you had not resized it, you wouldn't have any. But to fix that, click on your layer mask, go to Image, Adjustments, Threshold. And that is going to move any of those semi-transparent pixels fully transparent or fully opaque. So you can actually use this to finesse how big these gaps are in your image. Once you've got that set, click OK. And to preview our work to make sure it's gonna look right, we're gonna turn on that background layer, which we do every time we do any kind of work like this. And that is a great looking vintage worn texture. Again, turn off your background layer, export this file as a PNG or a PDF, whatever your RIP software likes to use the most, and print it. Finally, I'm gonna show you how to use our brush pack for Photoshop. Back on our website, you can purchase these texture brushes. They are the same looking textures just as a brush instead of an overlay texture. Let me show you how to use them. First thing you wanna do is go to Windows, Brushes. This is gonna open up your brushes panel. And once you've purchased the brush pack, you're gonna click on this little hamburger stack here, go Import Brushes, and it might be in your downloads file, someplace else, but this is what you're looking for, this DTF Vintage Texture Brush .abr. If it says .zip, you need to unzip it or uncompress the file, but this is what you're looking for, .abr. Click open. Now the best way to do this is with a layer mask. So we're gonna click on our main layer, we're gonna add a layer mask, making sure our highlight is around the layer mask, we're going to now use our brushes. So we can pick one of these and let's just make sure our color is black because if it's not black, it won't hide. And you can just click and drag and it creates this worn vintage look. Now, one thing that is super special about this brush pack is if you zoom in, you're gonna see it creates no semi-transparent pixels, because semi-transparent pixels are the bane of DTF producer's existence. So no semi-transparent pixels. Now, if you don't like the size of it or the way that it looks, you can adjust the size, but it's gonna default to a specific size that we feel kind of looks the best overall. Uh, if you didn't like that one, let's pick a different one. Let's pick this burnt wood texture. Oh yeah, I like this one. This one might be one of my favorites. There we go. And like we always do, we're gonna wanna check our work. I'm gonna select that under layer, shift delete to make it black. And that's what our printout's gonna look like. Feel free to play around with the sizing of the brushes. Uh, just be aware if you change some other settings, it could introduce some semi-transparent pixels and you definitely don't wanna do that. But once you're done and you're happy with your results, turn off that background layer, export it, and print it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video gave you some confidence to be able to create your own worn vintage texture that is very much in line with current trends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.